God has no luxury of thinking in percentages. Most of us we think in percentages when it comes to people. If 80% of our city would come to church, most of us would probably roll up to go into all the world, make disciples scripture, say, well, this was done. B plus. God doesn't think like that. You don't think like that. I remember when um, one of my brothers uh, who was kind of not doing well with the Lord. Well, not just not kind of doing well, going really bad with the Lord. <laughs> Uh, many years ago and this particular time I remember when my parents were extremely troubled for him they were so troubled that me and my wife I remember one time actually rolled up to my parents house and we didn't go inside because I knew they would be sad because of decisions that my brother was making he still lived in the house but he was making very poor decisions and it broke my parents heart where we would come in and we would sit down at the table and you could see this grief this pain and I hated my brother for that I was like just for the sake you're making my mom and dad feel so bad and I was so mad and when I saw that you know I remember talking to my mom and my dad once I'm like mom you got five siblings of oh, siblings five children I got five siblings you got five children I'm like okay I'm doing somewhat okay not the best I'm doing all right I'm like the other sister she's doing okay the other brother he's doing good he's doing okay the other sister she's doing I'm like just one knucklehead I'm like mom that's 80 percent of success in the family you can let go of that joker let I me mean, just just let him go i mean let's just maybe change his last name get rid of him so we can have a happy family i mean we don't have to worry about my brother let's let's be happy about four siblings and let's not worry about that one i mean okay he's struggling but let's worry about the fact that we have four that are doing good it's amazing how my mom couldn't think like that it's amazing how the four who were doing good it almost didn't matter if one wasn't doing bad. God has no luxury of looking at three cities in percentages. The Bible says he leaves 99 because one is not doing well. The heart of the Father is not the heart that you and I have. And when you and I get closer and you see the sadness or you see that love that He has for people, sooner or later, if you love God enough, you're going to try to do something just to kind of say, you know what God, I don't feel like that, but because I love you, I am going to start sharing that and I'm going to do something about people that you care about so much. Can somebody say amen? And I remember, you know, numerous times I would meet with my brother and honestly not because I was his youth pastor but because my parents were troubled. I remember praying and fasting for that reason, not necessarily because he wasn't doing so well but it's because I, I would see the grief on my parents' hearts and I was so close. The interesting part, most of you never knew that grief. My parents would come here and you would see them. You would never know that this was going on in their heart because you were not close to them. And when we are not close to God, we would come to worship many times. We would think everything is fine until you get closer to the heart of God. And you will begin to see why the cross happened in the first place. You begin to see why the Holy Spirit was sent in the first place. You begin to see why that God established the church and gave us these commands to bring other people to Jesus Christ. And something will begin to ache. You begin to realize that the purpose of your whole life is not really for yourself. It is for the heart of God. The reason God wants many people to be saved is not to just keep you busy as a church. It's not just to give you something to do. It's not because God wants big churches. It's the fact that God's love is so big and God cannot afford to have a small vision having a big heart. Can somebody say amen. amen. God cannot afford to have a small vision having a big heart. God's heart is so big it fits the whole universe. It's so big he was willing to let his son come on this earth and actually die by these rebellious sinful heathens. So that few of them perhaps by the grace of God will hear this message, be saved and have their lives changed. That's how big this heart is. He stretches his hand and says, if east and south, north and west come, he says, all of you, I'll wipe all of your records clean, forgive all of your sins and we start fresh. You'll be my children, I'll be your God. This is how big his heart is. So don't blame him for wanting too much. He gave in too much. He sacrificed too much. He loves too much and I'm glad he loves too much because if he would not love that much, I and you would make it in part of the plan. Can somebody say amen?